Yo guys, it's RJ Road Liberty. It's Monday evening, about sunset time ish, where I'm at, um, Colorado. Um, many events have transpired today since everything I'm gonna say on this video after this intro little part. That's why I'm doing an intro part, and I have a little conclusion part at the end to help summarize it too. Because without context, people who know me are gonna be like, "Oh, he's doing this," and I'm really not doing that. Um, but I want to, without spoiling it, let you see the video, enjoy that. And at the end, I'll give you a little recap of what's going to happen. Cool. Enjoy. Hey, guys. What's up? It's RJ, Road Liberty. I'm um, in a tent. i um, homeless again. And you're getting a video. Yay. <laughs> no. Um, so I'm going to fast forward through a lot of the details because we're gonna. I'll probably do some more videos breaking down some of these other things that happened to me recently but um basically I decided to part ways with um the girl I was dating um most of you guys know her by you know a lot of you people watching this know who I'm talking about but I'm not going to use for real names just for you know courtesy I guess um pretty chill ending to it as best as those things can go um, but in my typical fashion, when I felt like I wasn't getting the treatment I wanted to get that I felt comfortable with, or I felt like it was a destructive situation for myself, um, not to dwell on this, but I had to be out. So my choice was to get out of the relationship. And my way of usually doing that is to leave, you know, my partner, like, you know, the person I'm in a relationship with, it's easier to leave them with everything and you start fresh. So. Not that I, you know, we were like 50-50 pretty much into everything except for the car, which she owned. So it was easy for me to move on, I guess, that way, uh, not emotionally. But um, so anyway, <laughs> you guys don't want to hear about my love life. This is supposed to be informative about liberty. And I think it is. So um, I have 18% battery life right now. I started with 22. So this is going to probably be limited by the length of my computer battery for tonight. It's 8 o'clock on Sunday, 8 p.m. The sun has already went down over um, the mountain that I'm actually going to sleep on tonight. I probably didn't pick the best spot in the world to um, camp at in so far as it's up a pretty steep hill and it's also off of a private um, resort kind of golf club scene. A lot of you ANCAPs and volunteers might be saying to yourself, well, are you on private property right now? Are you trespassing? Are you... Um, breaking the non-aggression principle technically you know what guys i don't know right now um i don't know exactly whose land i'm on it's clearly unused if a landowner were to come to me and ask me to leave i certainly would peacefully do so um despite how much of a struggle it would be at this point um but it, i think it's safe to say that i'm in no one's way um far enough far enough up a dusty dirty hill that no one would want to climb up even a cop if they knew i was up here <laughs> Um, so I feel safe. Uh, other than the fact that I'm sleeping on kind of a hill, which I don't think you guys can be able to appreciate. I'm going to show you the hill that I'm sleeping on kind of, and then I'm going to show you as much as you can see of the view. And then uh, this is going to be uploaded Monday. I'm going to go to the library in the morning and upload this. Oh, might as well take a look at my rash while we have some daylight. It's not as bad. Um, you can see I'm more red in this area, um, but it used to go all the way down this arm here through the nipple, <laughs> as a doctor pointed out. And if you can kind of tell, you probably can't. Oh, yeah, you can. There's the line, right? They called it a cape. I guess that's where the toxins or the um, venom or whatever it was that got me has spread down to. Now it's starting to fade. Um, but in the past few days, it started to cause me actual um, tightness on my left side, like in my neck and my shoulder. So it just made hiking up this hill even more difficult um, because I really only wanted to put the weight of everything on my right shoulder so um, without further ado guys I want to show you a little bit what my scenery is like what my neighborhood looks like right now first uh, take a look at the tent um, you're definitely not gonna be able to tell that I'm sleeping on a hill from the perspective but try to step back a little bit it's hard because I'm not wearing shoes right now and uh, yeah and uh, there's a lot of cacti and thorny type of things on the ground yeah it's probably very hard for you guys to perceive oh hey perceive that i'm on a hill but um let me give you a little bit better of a view of some other things 
See the sunset going over the mountain there. And then I want you to be able to appreciate the height, but you may not be able to. Let me go over to the north side of my residence. Go out to my little vista. Now you guys can see what I'm working with. That's the golf course down there. That's Carbondale. So you can see there are some homes down there. But there's no homes on this side. Oh, I shouldn't say there aren't any homes on this side. There's one home on the side down there, but it's for sale and I think it's empty. <sighs> the best thing about Carbondale uh, view-wise is Mount Sopris, which you guys can get a little peeky peek at. You saw it at the library the other day if you saw that video. Mount Sopris is in my backyard too. It's right, oops, right off in the distance there. See if you can get a focus, boom. A little bit obscured by my um, angle, but um, you know, that's the one thing I got to say about camping it and being homeless is that usually you got to pay a lot of money to have a view like that. I wish I get better at <laughs> leveling the horizon. That's such a challenge. Um, as soon as I get to a great view, you guys are going to love me. And plus, I got to get my computer to focus. There we go. Yeah, you can see the top of my head. You can see what I'm working with. It's gangster. You probably get a better look at it just walking around anyway. Um... Don't take my cheer for, for being completely happy today. I'm very melancholy. Um, breakups are never easy. I did that video about relationships the other day because these things were going through my mind already. Ouch. Um, you know, fights and such. And I think I'm going to delve into that more in the future. And I think that the topic of our relationships with each other has a lot to do with our own personal liberty. The other thing I want to talk about real quick too um, is that I don't think liberty per se has to be directly, directly, directly always, this is going to probably get me in trouble and I might disagree with myself later. I just think that the notion of liberty, of having personal liberty in your life and the notion of property rights and the non-aggression principle aren't necessarily always such a direct link are always the only thing to consider. I'm not saying the NAP or property rights don't pertain to liberty or that they're not relevant in the discussion or that they're not maybe essential to liberty. So take this all very off the cuff. But my thing is like, part of having liberty in your life is feeling like you're able to be yourself, able to express yourself, able to go for the things that matter to you in life and pursue whatever interests you have without impinging upon someone else. And then also to feel like the people around you have an appreciation for that kind of ethic as well. And the more I get into, oh, you're, <laughs> you guys are behind my net. The, the more I get into the Liberty scene and whatnot, the more I start to come across people who actually call into question the um, the relevancy of the NAP and the relevancy of property rights and even rights in general. Can we actually say that we have rights? You know, what do all these things mean? So without being a philosopher and without having all of your ducks in a row, I think you can feel liberty um, insofar as my hair is a wreck. Um... You can feel liberty insofar as you can um, know if you're harmonizing with your life, right? Like, I wish I had less fluffy words to use to describe it to you guys, but for me, what it is, is I'm trying to find harmony, right? Like, I'm trying to find an environment or a group of people or whatever the case may be, um, where the way I wish to express myself, the way I wish to exist, kind of naturally flows with... Um, the people around me and the environment, right? So I've discovered I'm more of a uh, country person than a city person. I like it out in nature. I, I don't really mind where I'm at right now, except for, um, let me show you my water stash. <clears throat> my shoulder still hurts. This is my water stash. It says coconut oil, it's got coconut oil in it. But what I did was, is when I went down the river, I filled up this bottle. You can't really tell, but it's got that much water left. And this is a, pint 16 ounces so i probably have about a cup of water which i already drank the rest of that on the walk up here and i already drank a lot down at the river but make no mistake what's in my body right now is full-on river water um 
So again, how is this shit all relevant to Liberty? Why am I doing this? Why am I uploading this? Why should you care? Why should you watch this? Why should you tell anyone about it? Why can't I get my hair to go the way I want it to? There's a lot of questions. Um, basically, I'm trying to articulate it better and better. You know, every video or you know, as I go through this. But I feel like I'm doing something genuine. I feel like I'm doing something real. Um, I don't feel like this is as flagrant. Like, I'm not doing any civil disobedience in the traditional sense. I'm not really trying to get arrested as a martyr or, you know, I guess I'm trying to prove a point. But the only point I'm trying to prove is that we as people have too many excuses and too much comfort in our life and comfort's not a good thing um we think it's a good thing but comfort is what limits us and comfort is what is like our drug you know the more comfortable we seek to make ourselves the more we are going to resist anything new anything that challenges our comfort zone so hopefully actually i shouldn't say hopefully because i've already gotten the feedback i've already had people look at these videos and say thank you which is cool <laughs> and say um you know keep going and you're doing an awesome thing and this is probably so far and I don't even mean like try homeless I just mean being open about my life and how it relates to my understanding of liberty in a more vulnerable sense for you guys and for the audience for the web for the whole world um this is probably one of the most beautiful things I got going on in my life right now especially since I broke up with my girl but you know not to be needy on you guys but I do want you to know that like I've kind of put a lot uh into this so to speak only in so far as like i really care like i care about liberty i care about being effective i care about being engaged with uh important discussion important group of people i don't mean vip i mean like important in so far as like they see life as important like they see issues as important i can't function around people who can overlook so much that's going on in the world and that can overlook the consistency of their own actions and their own behaviors, right? So if you can't settle on the NAP, non-aggression principle, if you can't settle on democracy or being a Republican or being a libertarian or being gay or being straight or being... Um, an alcoholic or being sober if you can't settle on one label maybe you don't belong in a label maybe you need to find you maybe you need to tell anybody or anything in your life that's forcing you not to be you in any way that you don't need that and you shouldn't have to uh, survive that like you and all of us we should be pursuing that which we want most in our lives and sometimes we think we are sometimes we think we have what we want in our sights and we're going towards it and then it doesn't work or it's confusing or whatever i would wager that in that case either you're not going for the thing you really want or you are going for the thing you think you want which might be the thing you really want but you're not looking around to make sure that you're consistent to make sure that you have put that thing that you want at the correct spot in your list of priorities so that you're going to attain it um, and make sure that you don't put anything that you want less above that thing so that's hard. I'm not an expert. You know, I make value judgments on choices in my life all the time and some work out better than others. But, you know, for a video I'm doing with no notes, I kind of knew where I wanted this to go and I feel like I'm kind of going there. Um, being as my battery is being chill, I'm at 10%. I'm going to go a few more minutes longer. Just try to hammer down some of these points and maybe open up and tell you guys some more things about how I'm feeling. Um, if you can't philosophically understand moral ethics or libertarianism or anything like that, I think it's better to admit that instead of trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in all these debates. Um, the nice thing about liberty, the nice thing about anarchy, the nice thing about volunteerism, any way you want to describe it, is that we don't have to figure it all out. We don't have to get everyone to agree. We don't have to... What I hear a lot is... Well, if you don't like X, Y, and Z, present your better alternative. What would you do? And I think that's where society has been stuck for a long time. It's not what anyone would do because that's a great man fallacy. It's what would we all do if we all had freedom? 
yeah, there'd be some maniacs that go around robbing and looting and whatever, and they, their day would probably be numbered, just like in the old Wild West. You know, you, you ruffle up too many feathers, you, you, you know, offend somebody, you're already going to be given the crooked eye everywhere you go. Um, I had a pretty deep con- conversation a few days ago with someone who um, might be... The fuck is that? Damn. Shit was in there. What the fuck is that? Is that a bug or just a fucking thing? It's nature, man. I had to rip that shit out of my hair. I don't know what the fuck that is. So, <laughs> um, where was I? I had a deep conversation with um, someone from my audience recently. We talked on uh, Skype for about five hours. He wants to possibly present some views that would provide an alternative to or a different way of looking at liberty individual liberty without using NAP, without using property rights. And that's kind of cool that someone is working on that, even if we're all pretty addicted to or comfortable with uh, the way we justify and explain liberty. Um, If you're about liberty, then you're about people doing it their own way. So hopefully we get that person to actually write the content or produce it or let me interview them. Um, I guess they're still dividing whether they want to go on record with their name or if they want to remain anonymous. So I won't delve into too much of that, but I just like the idea that there's different ways of looking at liberty and you don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be a philosopher to, to get involved with this. And as much as it kind of sucks in a way to look at my life and be like, dude, you have no girl. You're thousands of miles away from any other family or friends outside of the girl you just broke up with and the people you met in town two days ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy, but... Um, Pursuing liberty is about, you know, sometimes it's about being brave because sometimes the place you want to be liberty-wise or personal freedom-wise doesn't even seem like one of your options. You look around yourself and you say, well, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, I could do that. And none of those things look that good for you personally. Like you're, you're going to be subject to someone else's wishes. You're going to be on the dole. You're going to be borrowing from someone. You're going to be living on someone's couch. You're going to be getting handout. Any which way where you're not totally in charge of your own survival, your own well-being, your own um, ups and downs. And that includes me. You know, it, to that extent, we're not free. Um, it's a good place to be put in uh, Road to Liberty forward slash donate. Um, only because, you know, as much as I am taking donations right now and as much as I will make that a little part of what I do... Um, Once the ad revenue can kick up off of YouTube and off of the website and off of the other sites that I build as just business projects that aren't as passion oriented for me, I want to just travel the world and report on liberty and report on my my thoughts regarding personal freedom and liberty. And that's going to include expatriation. It's going to include relationships. It's going to include dealing with family. It's going to include actually, you know, explaining liberty to people. It's going to include a lot of things. And I've also made a recent post on RoadsLiberty.com that asks people to come forward and uh, either be a guest on my show, then my show, just we'll do a Google Hangout interview, and then I'll put like the bumpers and the intro and stuff in it um, after the fact and upload it, and then I'll promote it, and I'll put it on RoadsLiberty.com. Um, don't be shy. I actually spoke to someone today who responded to that post and said that she would be interested in being interviewed, even though she's not any kind of celebrity she's no one famous and I was like perfect I was like everyone and this is I would love to have Jeffrey Tucker on my show I'd love to have Adam Kokash and I've already had a few of the Freedom Fiends Michael Dean Lou Fien and Nima Vidati all on the show that was an honor that was a cool thing but to me it's not a a rush to get all the celebritarians on it's more I want to offer something different anyway I want you guys to go all right so I'll tune into Road to Liberty to get more of the you know expat travel lifestyle make your own liberty, homesteading in the woods, whatever it takes kind of liberty liberty content. And then you can go somewhere else for the Rothbard and, and you can go somewhere else for the peaceful protesting outside a courthouse and you can go somewhere else for the man on the street and you can go somewhere else for the sovereign citizen, you know, trying to, you know, strut your rights with cops and in courtrooms and stuff. I really want to be off the grid. I want I like that I homesteaded this little spot. I'm tro- hoping to find a... Um, less steep and more discreet way into town from here even if it's longer so once i get some shut eye um i'm hoping to fall asleep relatively soon next hour or two um because when the sun goes down and you're camping and i don't have a can uh a lantern or anything 
you just gotta chill in the dark or go to sleep unless you want to make a fire but I'm too tired to make a fire tonight and uh, I think I'll be asleep before that really proves worth it plus in Colorado the temperatures tend to swing a lot from like today was like 95 during the day and it'll probably go down to like 48 50 you know something like that at night so not too too bad it's about 10 degrees warmer than it was when I first started camping in California uh, and in New Jersey that was bad I had nights in the 30s in New Jersey so I'll be okay I think temperature wise but you know once the sun goes down unless you're into uh, meditation or um, if my batteries recharge, I could listen to a podcast or do more work on the computer, but I'm at 5%, so I'm going to wrap this up pretty much, guys. Um, tomorrow, like I said, I plan on going to town, editing, uploading this video, doing some more outreach, trying to line up some guests, maybe do a guest interview tomorrow and get that up. And um, go to the site, share with your friends, um, give me your feedback about what I'm doing, what you think, if you think it has anything to do with liberty at all, if it's inspiring you. If you think it's a waste of everyone's time, if you think um, I'm a fake libertarian or you think I'm not helping, whatever positive or negative stuff you want to say to me, say it out loud, say it in public, say it in the comments, say it on roadsliberty.com, say it on the YouTube video in the comments, say it on Facebook, um, forward slash Road to Liberty, say it on my homepage, on my personal page if you know me. I really don't care. I want to get feedback. I want to let you know that as much as this is my journey, this is also something that I need to bring value to someone or the groups of people, um, I need to reach a bunch of you guys in order for me to validate doing this, in order for this to prove something that I want to keep doing. So I've started to get the feedback. I've started to get some people saying, you know, I like what you're doing and this is cool. Um, but if you share with more people, that'll give me more of an opportunity to get more feedback. Um, and that's what I really need is like, should I do this? What should I change? What am I missing? What do I have all wrong? What do I have all right? Um, and just whatever ideas you have. So without any further ado, guys, I'm going to keep the 5% battery, 4% battery I have left and uh, sign out. Um, I'll give you one more peek at my view for sticking around to the end of the video. And uh, yeah, check it out, guys. Nice little sunset going on. Well, that's it, guys. That's the tent door, and I'm going to seal it up <laughs> and uh, say goodbye to you guys. So until probably tomorrow, um, this is RJ Parker with Roads to Liberty. Trying homeless, doing homeless, whatever, camping again. Um, thanks for all your support. Thanks for all your uh, couple donations we've gotten. And thanks for all your um, you know feedback and shares and everything. It really matters a lot to me. See you guys on the next one. Bye. All right. So you saw the video and you saw me in the woods. Awesome. Um, that was probably just for that one night, actually. Um, I guess what happened mostly to land the plane is um, my family, um, I'm not going to get into any details, but basically, my, you know, members of my family expressed interest in helping me out and saying, like, I don't want to see you homeless, despite it being this, like, quest of yours or whatever. So... I'm not going to front with you guys as much as it might help me get noticed online or give me something to talk about in regards to something I did that some other people didn't do or whatever. Um, I'm all about fa fame and celebrity. I'm about actually being useful and I think I might be more useful if I have a bed to sleep in and roof over my head and Wi-Fi all day long and showers, all these great things that, you know, civilization comes with. So I won't tell you guys or tell anyone right now online where I'm going and what's going to happen because I don't know that that's all going to take place but it doesn't appear that I, I'm even going back to that tent for a few days but we'll see um, so I was hoping to be able to show you guys like more techniques on like how to make a fire what kind of sticks you can tell are dry and what kind you can tell are wet and whatever but maybe once I get my feet on the ground in like a month or two some savings like I'll go camping like a normal person kind of like intentionally and like you know I'll give you some more of that kind of junk in those videos later but yeah, still give me your feedback, still give me some guest ideas, and uh, still give me money. No, you don't have to give me money, but if you want, you can. It's for Liberty Forest slash donate. I will take it and spend it on cool things. Uh, and uh, share my stuff. Peace. All right, guys. Later.